We're just getting started. I mean, you asked me about the treaty. This is the single most important thing in the world is the New START treaty because all the other new treaties have expired and, and ceased to exist, okay? So this treaty that Obama had negotiated was the very last treaty that limited the number of strategic nuclear weapons on America and Russia's side, long range, um, you know, land-based, uh, sub-based and air uh, launched thermonuclear thermonuclear weapons and limits them to i guess 7000 each 4000 deployed another 3000 in reserve something like that uh, pretty sure that's right some somewhere right around there mm-hmm. and you know that whole story about how obama promised this massive overhaul trillions of dollars they started out saying it was 1.3 and now it's already uh 2.7 or whatever it'll be 4 trillion by the time they're done trillions to completely overhaul America's entire nuclear weapons industry and entire nuclear weapons arsenal. I'm going to take every nuke we got, dismantle it, and then remantle it again and charge you $4 trillion for the fund um, when none of this is necessary whatsoever. But Obama had to make that compromise with the Republicans in the Senate to get the treaty passed. And I love this. And everybody should have thought of this, but it's not like you're going to watch this uh, episode of 2020 about it because they won't ever produce it. But there really is a thing in the U.S. Senate called the Nuclear Caucus. And what it is, is it's a group of senators who represent Western states that collect billions of dollars in welfare from the U.S. government for the care and feeding and creation and study and all the things of America's nuclear weapons industry. Mm-hmm. And just like any other interest group in America, like the AARP or the Israeli lobby or the tobacco lobby or the gun lobby or any other lobby, this is the nuclear weapons lobby. And their job is making sure that Uncle Sam always wants more H-bombs and never runs out and never satiates his appetite for what they've got to sell. He's their captive market. And these nukes, after all, are made by quasi private companies who have this massive profit motive to continue the policy. And so and then they lobby for the policy. Oh, it's a world full of dangers out there. It's unthinkable that you would stop buying H-bombs from us. Think of all the danger we'd be in if you did. So they have this huge role in deciding the policy and the shape of the narrative about the policy and everything else. And this is why Obama had to promise them $3 trillion in nuclear weapons warfare to uh, welfare to get them to support his treaty to limit the number of deployed nukes. Right. And then, so Trump let the God treaty expire. Oh, Mr. Let's get along with Russia. Let it expire. And, um, You know, Putin said, no, let's get back in it. No conditions. Let's just get back in it. And Biden said, "Okay, let's do that. So at least we got that. And you can read the readout, you know, their summary of his call with Putin was the first thing they did was say, "Okay, let's get back in the new start treaty. Okay, deal. Okay, good. And then the rest of the time he attacks him with a bunch of false accusations, hacking in our computers and meddling in our elections, putting bounties on our soldiers in Afghanistan. Charlie Savage's disgrace, CIA's lies in The New York Times from last summer and all of this and read him the riot act over a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, who knows if Biden even has a clue of how dishonest all of this stuff is at this point. He read it and he read Charlie Savage in the Times and believed it like every other idiot who believed it, I guess. 